We're now going to move to final statements by each of the panelists. Uh, let me begin my concluding remarks by uh, answering the last question that was asked about what would constitute victory. As has already, I think, been made clear, uh, Sir Malcolm and myself both share the view that we've long passed the point at which anything uh, approaching victory really is achievable. But let's, let's suppose for the moment that we magically forget about all the damage done uh, and we simply focus on starting at this moment. If it were possible for all U.S. troops, not just the 25% that are combat troops, all U.S. troops to return from Iraq, for that to occur with Iraq remaining stable and without further violence, if the five million Iraqi internally displaced persons and external refugees then returned to Iraq, also without violence, if Iran abandoned its pursuit of nuclear weapons, and if Iraq gets just to number 150 in the corruption index, I would consider that we would have made enormous progress. Nobody believes these things are going to occur. Nobody. Nobody. Let me unfortunately conclude with an email message I received um, a few days before my film was happily nominated for an Academy Award uh, by someone who'd seen the film. My son, Noah Charles Pierce, served two tours in Iraq, and in your film, you showed a scene of kids throwing rocks at trucks, and you can hear the soldiers wanting to shoot the kids, which is true. Shortly after the invasion, my son was in Baghdad cleaning up the dead civilians who were being pelted while being pelted with rocks. The kids grew braver and became more effective until orders came down to shoot them. Charles, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to cut you off. I'm sorry, I'm going to finish. I'm, I'm sorry, I have Soldiers to cut you off. Soldiers gunned Charles, them down. I'm sorry, I have to cut you off. Last July, my Charles, son I'm sorry. committed suicide. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry. Was that the end? Well, since I talked all over it, and the audience is saying let you finish, read the last sentence again. Okay. My son watched in terror as his fellow soldiers gunned him down. Last uh, July, my, my son shot himself last July. We have admitted openly that we had a failed strategy in Iraq for three plus years, but we do have a winning strategy now. And I look at Iraq as an opportunity. It is clearly in the United States national interest to have an Arab Muslim country with a duly elected democratic government aligned with the United States in a region of the world, like it or not, that we will spend the next 30 to 50 years involved in and it will continue to be ideological and serious struggles there. This is a step forward for the national security interest of the American people to have that kind of a relationship with a, a stable government. We are not there yet, but the signs are clearly there, and they were not there in the past. And with the investments that we are making in resources and in certainly with our soldiers' commitment and, yes, with their lives, that is absolutely worth the sacrifice, in my judgment, in terms of the security of the United States and what that region, that troubled region of the world will be. There is not a single Sunni Arab state that surrounds Iraq that will not change as a result of a stable, duly elected democratic government in that country. And the Iranians will have to change and be influenced by it as well. And that is the opportunity that is in front of us. And that is why we are so committed to it. And regardless of all the mistakes in the past, that is in front of us right now. General Keene has just said that in his view, what might be achieved in Iraq is worth the sacrifice that has been made. I think, you know, that's a very easy challenge to test. I think we just have to ask ourselves if five years ago, we had known that by going to war, over 100,000 Iraqis would die, Two million would be refugees in other countries. The internal economy would collapse. 
the Shia and Sunni communities would get into sectarian conflict, and we would have helped make Iran the real power in the Gulf. Would we have thought that achieving an Iraqi government which was elected, but which is not a true democracy yet and may never be, that that was on balance a sacrifice worth making? Uh, I don't believe that the 100,000 Iraqis who have died or their families who have survived them will believe it was a sacrifice worth making. Iran is the real winner of this conflict. The Iraqi peoples have been the losers. The fact that they may now have a government which is better than Saddam Hussein, but what a terrible price they have paid for it. And we know that we're not going to invade any other country knowing what now we know happens when you carry out such a strategy as we have carried out in Iraq. Um, I'd like to start by noting for the record that a number of people left, and I have psychic abilities, and I know that all of those people would now vote for the proposition, and I hope that their votes will be counted. Um, look, I, vote however you want to vote. I, that's, I, uh, let me step back from that for a minute and just say, this issue is too important for us to continue to be the bird that flies backwards always looking at where it was and never looking to where it's going. And I'm deeply distressed by the tendency in our political class, our political discourse, and unfortunately the presidential race as well, to focus again and again on refighting mistakes that every single person up here agrees were made. And every single person up here criticized. The issue is not, did we make mistakes? The issue is, where are we now and where are we headed? And that is what we need to focus on as a nation. Because the world will not stop and stand still while we flagellate ourselves, or as some of us flagellate others, for mistakes that were made. And we cannot go through the entirely self-referential exercise of beating ourselves up for what we did wrong and assume that the world will wait till we get through that and then do something. The stakes are too high, and we can't have a conversation like that. As for effect on the region, let me simply end with a little story. I went to the border post opposite Mehran, uh, which has a major Quds Force base um, in Iran. And I stood on the border, and I spoke with an American officer who every day met with and spoke to some of the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Iranian pilgrims who come to Iraq every day to go to the holy shrines of Najaf and Karbala and in Baghdad. Right, I have to cut you off. You have uh, ten, you're going to take the, 10 seconds. OK. They say three things to him, he said, no, all the time. I've got to give you 10 seconds. This is 10 seconds. Thank you. We love America. And come visit us soon. Now we see how this turned out. Once again, we'd like you to turn to the keypads that are by each of your seats and reminding you what our motion is. America is finally winning the war in Iraq. If you support the motion, press number one. If you are against the motion, press number two. If you remain undecided, press number three. And within a few seconds, actually, we will have the results. Interesting. We've had some movement. Before the debate, to remind you, 20% were for the motion, 54% were against, and 26% were undecided. The motion for moved more of you. 36% are now for the motion, 53% are against, 11% remain undecided. So while the majority view remains against, more people's minds were changed by the course of this debate in support of the motion, the US is finally winning the war in Iraq. Thank you for attending. We'll see you at the next Intelligence Square debate, and thank you to our panel.